The first and second derivative of a function can tell us a lot about the shape of the graph of the function. In this video, we'll see what f prime and f double prime can tell us about where the function is increasing and decreasing, is concave up and concave down, and has inflection points. We say that a function is increasing if f of x1 is less than f of x2 whenever x1 is less than x2. In other words, the graph of the function goes up as x increases from left to right. We say that the function f is decreasing if f of x1 is greater than f of x2 whenever x1 is less than x2. In other words, the height of the function goes down as we move from left to right. In this graph, it's a little hard to say what's happening when x is near 2. Is it completely horizontal, or is the graph slightly increasing? If we assume it's slightly increasing, then in this example, f of x is increasing as x ranges from 0 to 6, and again as x ranges from 10 to 11. The graph is decreasing for x values between 6 and 10, and for x values between 11 and 12. The first derivative of f can tell us where the function is increasing and decreasing. In particular, if f prime of x is greater than 0 for all x on an interval, then f is increasing on this interval. This makes sense because f prime being greater than 0 means the tangent line has positive slope. Similarly, if f prime of x is less than 0 for all x in an interval, then f is decreasing on this interval. That's because a negative derivative means the tangent line has a negative slope. A precise proof of these facts can be found in the textbook or in another video. We say that a function is concave up on an interval from a to b if, informally, it looks like a bowl that could hold water on that interval. More formally, the function is concave up on that interval if all the tangent lines for the function on that interval lie below the graph of the function. The function is concave down on the interval from a to b if, informally, it looks like an upside down bowl that would spill water on that interval. Or, more formally, the function's concave down if all the tangent lines lie above the graph of the function on that interval. In this example, f is concave up around here and again around here. On the left piece, it looks like part of a bowl that could hold water. So we can say that f is concave up on the intervals from 2 to 4 and the interval from 8 to 11. f is concave down on this piece and this piece and this piece. So we can say that f is concave down on the interval from 0 to 2, from 4 to 8, and from 11 to 12. The concavity of a function is related to its second derivative. Here, where the function is concave up, its derivative is going from essentially 0 to larger positive values. So the first derivative is increasing, which means the second derivative is positive. On this section of the graph, which is also concave up, the derivative is going from negative values to 0. That's an increase in the first derivative, so that means the second derivative here must be positive. And in this piece, where the first derivative is going from 0 to positive values, the first derivative is also increasing, so the second derivative is also positive. On the parts of the function that are concave down, we can see that in this example, the second derivative is negative. Here, the first derivative is going from positive towards 0. That's a decrease in the first derivative, or a negative second derivative. Here, the first derivative is going from positive to 0 to negative. That's a, also a decreasing first derivative, or a negative second derivative. And the same thing happens on this section here. In general, we can use the second derivative to predict the concavity of a function. The concavity test says that if the second derivative is positive for all x on an interval, 
then the function f is concave up on that interval. Similarly, if the second derivative is negative for all x on an interval, then the function f is concave down on that interval. One way to remember the concavity test is that a positive second derivative gives us a happy face. So the smile is supposed to be a concave up function. And a negative second derivative gives us a sad face where the smile, or the frown, I guess, is a concave down function. Next, let's talk about inflection points. A function has an inflection point at x equals c if it's continuous at c and it changes concavity at c. In other words, f has an inflection point at x equals c if f changes from concave up to concave down at x equals c or it changes from concave down to concave up. In this graph, if we draw the concavity regions again, we see that f has an inflection point at x equals 2, where the function changes from concave down to concave up, at x equals 4, where the function changes from concave up to concave down, at x equals 8, and again at x equals 11. Since concavity has to do with the second derivative being positive or negative, inflection points happen where the second derivative changes sign, from positive to negative, or from negative to positive. And that's exactly what the inflection point test says. If the f double prime of x changes sign at x equals c, then f has an inflection point at x equals c. Now in order to change from positive to negative or negative to positive, f double prime has to go through zero or go through a point where it doesn't exist. But you have to be careful. Just because f double prime is zero or doesn't exist does not guarantee that you necessarily have an inflection point because it could be zero and still be positive on both sides or negative on both sides. For example, if f of x is x to the fourth, then f prime of x is 4x cubed and f double prime of x is 12x squared. So f double prime at 0 is certainly 0, but there is no inflection point at x equals 0. In fact, the graph of f of x equals x to the fourth looks kind of like a flattened quadratic, and so there's no change in concavity. f is concave up on both sides of x equals 0. In this video, we saw that the first derivative can tell us where the function is increasing and decreasing, while the second derivative can tell us where the function is concave up and concave down. And the second derivative changing sign from positive to negative or negative to positive can tell us where we have inflection points.